If you're looking for a open world sandbox survival game with a Viking theme, well good news, because today we're going to be taking a look at Valheim. This title has been in early access for over two years now, but that hasn't stopped players from racking up hundreds if not thousands of hours. Valheim has had a lot of industry praise and even won several awards. So if you want to know more about this title and the current state of it, then join me in my journey as I explore Valheim and whether it's worth playing in 2023. So let's talk about the gameplay. It is a survival game so it does incorporate all the typical aspects you would expect such as farming, crafting and of course building. However, it goes slightly further than that by adding in some RPG elements. But before we get to that part, we have to do the most important thing, which is of course the character creation screen. When Odin heard his enemies were grown once again in strength, he looked to Midgard and sent his Valkyries to scour the battlefields for the graces of their warriors. Dead to the world, they'll be born again in Valheim. So I called my character Plob. I felt like it was very fitting with the lore. Oh, and I gave him a beard. Brr, go Vikings. Some of you at this point might be alarmed by the character model and think it looks a bit blocky and just slightly better than Roblox. But I assure you, once you are in the ambient and immersive world, you will soon forget how square your jawline actually is. The game starts off by spawning you in a very nice and quaint area known as the Meadows, which is the first of six biomes that you will eventually be introduced to. It's also worth noting that there are three more planned for release, but we don't know what they are yet. You start off in typical fashion by finding sticks and rocks to craft basic tools, which you can then use to craft your very first home. I should also mention this game does allow you to play with other people. You actually have the choice of co-op or PvP with 10 other players. Of course, I'm a pussy, so I went with the co-op mode. Don't judge me. Building is a very big aspect in this game. Which is why I leaned on my friends when I was trying to find out how to turn my crack house into a crack home. This is fucking painful. Well, what's painful is when people don't finish the fucking roof off. What is this? you kept extending the fucking house, you fucking hard. Now, if you want to take everything out, then take one of them and take one of them and then take one of them and then take one Leave a like if you also have a friend circle who constantly shout at you when you play games. Maybe I'm the problem. Yes, very sad. Anyway. And with that pro advice, I give you my crack shack. <laughs> to progress in this game, you need to explore each biome, which comes with its own set of unique resources, mobs, and of course, big, ruddy, scary bosses to defeat. However, each biome gradually gets more and more difficult which means you'll have to craft better weapons, better armor, better food, and of course, potions. And to give the game a bit of RPG flair, you also have skills which you can level up. There are several different buffs and debuffs to worry about within this game. Eating better food provides you better buffs, sort of like real life, I guess. Fucking delicious. And having matching armor can also provide positive and negative traits. The world is very vast, but thankfully you have the ability to create portals which allow you to fast travel from one settlement to another. And for all you seafaring vikings, you can create a boat which you can then use to explore the world. Just be warned that the depths might hide some hidden enemies. It don't. It don't go down. Like a true sandbox game, you can play however you want. If you want to go explore dungeons in a biome, off you go, go enjoy, try not to die to a cave troll. Or maybe you prefer your games to be more relaxing and just want to sit there and fish. Guess what? You can do that too. And of course, for the more artistic people, you can put all your energy into building. And to all those degenerate role players out there, I'm sure you'll find something to do. Oh, oh. Okay, I don't care, listen. I don't care what the law says. If I see this, I'm fucking the shit out of it. Raw dog! But what really does it for me with this game is just the small details that they put in there. For instance, if you put a fire in your house with no chimney, uh, you will choke to death. You will get carbon monoxide poisoning. And there's a certain level of respect I have for that amount of detail. However, with all that being said, Unfortunately, there are a few negatives, which I'll talk about next. 
So, I won't sugarcoat this, but at times the combat can be pretty janky. I know this is a survival game, so combat isn't like the top priority. And to be fair, they've done a good job with the roll dodging, the parrying, the blocking, and the running away. But for whatever reason, the hitboxes just seem to be a bit off. And it can make combat at times seem very frustrating. But what's worse than the combat? I think it's the progressive grind. Survival games aren't meant to be rushed. You're supposed to take your time, do a little bit of farming, and yes, there is somewhat of a grind. But what frustrates me about Valheim is that as you progress, the materials seem to double in cost. So for instance, a starting out bronze sword is eight bronze, which is, you know, a fair amount. But then if you want an iron sword, which is the next level up, you're going to need 20 iron, which is obviously a resource which is harder to get than bronze. And then when we go on from there, you then have a silver sword, which is 40 silver. And I just don't understand the point in this. It just feels like it's done to make the game feel more progressive, when in actual fact, all it's doing is stalling your playtime. There are other annoyances, such as you can only carry 300 kilograms in weight. Your armor, for some reason, takes up space in your inventory, even though technically you're wearing it. And then another thing which I don't quite understand, you can't carry metal alloys through the portal, which wouldn't necessarily be a problem if the fact that the biomes weren't so spread out, so you've got to travel quite far to get these rare metals and then bring them back to your main base in order to process them. Yes, there are carts and boats that you can use, but it just feels like, I don't know, it, this isn't lore, it's just made up for the sake of making your gameplay experience last longer. Now, I am fully aware that some of these settings can be adjusted before you start your game. You can change the server settings to be more friendly. But as a new player, you wouldn't really know about any of this. So you can imagine the sort of frustration that someone new to this game might actually have. The good news is, though, there is a strong modding community for this game. So if there is anything which can't be changed in the server settings, then you can pretty much guarantee there's a mod out there which can fix a lot of stuff. And that does include the graphics. There are reshaders which can make the game look a lot nicer. So, the elephant in the room. Valheim is still in early access. Which, surprisingly, hasn't had an effect on the popularity of this game. The Steam charts are looking very, very healthy. The team behind this game consists of five members. So it's kind of understandable that it's had slower development than, say, some other AAA studios. The full release date hasn't been specified, and I doubt it'll be anytime soon for a few different reasons. The team have openly said that they want to add a few more different features to the title, as well as clear up some bugs, so understandably, they want to keep it in early access, so not to deceive their audience to say, oh look, it's a fully fledged game and there's nothing wrong with it, and you kind of have to respect that. If only other game studios had this much integrity. <coughs> Bethesda, <coughs> tot, tot out. <coughs> So, I have a bad cough. There are other external factors as well which may play a part on the release of Valheim. For instance, Valheim runs on the Unity game engine, and this week Unity decided to basically be a bunch of dickheads. Hello, I like money. Unity have decided to change the way they issue licenses and the pricing around their engine. So any game studio currently using the Unity game engine or planning on using it might incur some costs when the game is downloaded by customers. Originally, Unity game engine was free to develop on, which is why it's been so popular with a lot of indie studios. But now Unity has changed its price model and as of January 1st, 2024, when a game using the Unity engine is downloaded, it will incur a cost to the developers who produce that title. It's worth noting as well that when a title is sold on Steam, Steam themselves take a 30% cut. And let's be honest here, a lot of indie titles aren't exactly overpriced. They usually have quite a low threshold for you to be able to purchase them at. To give you an idea as to how bad it is, the developers behind Crab Games it would have cost them 5.6 million under the new Unity rules. So where does this leave Valheim? Well, the simple answer is, we don't know. Naturally, lots of people are up in arms about the Unity changes and hopefully they'll rethink their plan. But as it stands, it could be quite detrimental to Valheim and its actual release date. So thank you Unity, you bunch of greedy fucks.
Valheim is a great survival game. I'd say it's up there with Minecraft and Terraria. It has its own unique style and addictiveness. And honestly, I hope all the Unity shit doesn't hinder its chances for a full release because I want to see the complete title. I've played a lot of early access games and by far Valheim is the best one. It doesn't feel like early access, which is the great thing about it. So if you were to ask me, should you play Valheim in 2023? My only question back would be, why are you not playing this already? Honestly, download it. You won't regret it. It's a lot of fun. And you never know, it might not be around next year if Unity go ahead and destroy every indie game out there. And on that depressing bombshell, I'll end the video. As always though, if you do like my stuff and you want to see more videos like this one, by all means, subscribe. Maybe leave a like to help with the algorithm. And I'll leave a couple of videos on the screen right now, which you might enjoy. So maybe give them a click. It helps me grow my channel, blah, 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 all that jazz. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.